Okay, now we're going to continue on in Unit 4. Um, we have learned so far how to name alcohols, thiols, and ethers. Now we're going to learn about reactions. And we learned some reactions in Unit 3. We're going to expand our knowledge of reactions in Unit 4. And um, all the reactions that you need to learn for this course are summarized nicely on page 22 of your blue book. So if you just want to, you know, review these reactions, uh, have a nice summary page, go to page 22 of your blue book. So the first type of reactions we're going to talk about in Unit 4 are oxidation reactions. And oxidation can be defined as the loss of hydrogen. It's an O right there if you can't tell. Or the gain of oxygen. Now we learned about oxidation in Unit 2. When you think of oil rig. And it's the same type of thing that's going on in terms of electrons. But it's easier if I put it in terms of loss of hydrogen or gain of oxygen uh, when we're talking about organic molecules specifically. So the oxidation reactions that we'll primarily see in Unit 4 deal with alcohols. And it's very useful to know the difference between primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols for this section of Unit 4. So anytime you see an arrow with an O over it in brackets, this means oxidation. There are a variety of reagents that can be used to oxidize alcohols. Um, a lot of them are chromium-based. Uh, we'll use one in lab that is chromium-based, and you'll see a color change. So um, we just stick to a general oxidation bracket so you don't have to learn all the different reagents that can be used to oxidize alcohols. So let's go through each of these alcohols and see what oxidation does to the alcohols. So let's draw out the condensed structural formula of 2-butanol. So remember butanol has four carbons and off the second carbon, you have an alcohol or an OH. So fill in your hydrogens, three here, one here, two here, three here. Now, in oxidation reactions, the part of the molecule that changes is the alcohol and the carbon bearing the alcohol. Remember I said that oxidation is the loss of hydrogen. So you're going to get rid of hydrogen. Remember that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule, so you're going to get rid of two hydrogen atoms. So lose two H atoms. Where you will lose two hydrogen atoms are from the alcohol, the OH itself, and then the carbon bearing the alcohol. Where the hydrogens were will be a double bond. So I put that dotted. Let me draw out the product. So it's going to be CH3C. No hydrogen on that C, or else that would be too many bonds to carbon when you make the double bond. Put the oxygen here. No H there. We got rid of it. CH2, CH3. So 2-butanol is a secondary alcohol. We oxidized it to what functional group? A C double bond O is a ketone. So secondary alcohols can be oxidized and they're oxidized to ketones. Well, let's look at another alcohol. Let's look at ethanol. Ethanol, CH3, CH2, OH. I'm going to highlight the area where the molecule will change get rid of the hydrogen on the oxygen and one of the hydrogens on the carbon bearing the oxygen. Make a double bond. 
So my product will look like this. And I'm going to draw my carbonyl pointing up. Um, it's not incorrect to draw it pointing to the right. It's just more convention that carbonyls are drawn with the oxygen at the top and the carbon at the bottom. So ethanol is what type of alcohol? It is a primary alcohol, and it can be oxidized to what functional group do we make? An aldehyde. So primary and secondary alcohols can be oxidized. Let's look at 2-methyl, two 2-propanol. Two so we have three carbons. Off the second carbon, we have an OH and a methyl group. Um, so fill in my hydrogens. I'm going to highlight the area of change in this molecule and see which hydrogens I can remove. I can remove this hydrogen, but I'm missing a hydrogen here. So since there isn't a hydrogen on the carbon bearing the oxygen, I cannot remove one. I can't remove one from a neighbor either. So because there isn't a hydrogen on the carbon bearing the OH, no oxidation can occur. So for this reaction, nothing occurs, no reaction. And that's because this is a tertiary alcohol. So tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized. So on the next page, I want you to complete the following reactions. Think about primary, secondary, tertiary alcohols. Draw out your hydrogens on the carbon bearing the oxygen. So I want you to hit pause, complete these reactions. Okay, so if you look at the first reaction, phenol is what we're trying to oxidize. So you kind of highlight this area. Remember that this carbon here, one, two, three, four, already has four bonds. So right here, there is no hydrogen. So since there's no hydrogen, there's no reaction on the first, first reaction. The second reaction, the alcohol that we're dealing with is 1-propanol. It's a primary alcohol. So we do have hydrogens to remove, and we can make an aldehyde. Um, the third reaction, this is a secondary alcohol. The carbon here has three bonds shown, so you have an additional hydrogen that's not shown since geometric formulas have implied hydrogens. I'm going to remove this hydrogen, remove that hydrogen, make a double bond, and we get a ketone. So secondary alcohols always produce ketones. In the last reaction, we have a tertiary alcohol. If you look at the carbon bearing the OH, there aren't any hydrogens. So there's a hydrogen here, but we don't have any hydrogens here. So tertiary alcohols, when you try to oxidize them, you get no reaction. So to summarize, a primary alcohol upon oxidation will give you an aldehyde secondary alcohol upon oxidation will give you a ketone and a tertiary alcohol when oxidized will give you no reaction. So if it helps you with your studies you can make a um, reaction sheet because we're going to learn more reactions in unit 4 and um, what you can have is uh, kind of you fold this piece of paper in half and on one side you have the reactants and the other side you have products so you know if you wanted to practice your oxidation reactions you could put this for instance and then on the right side you would have 
get rid of two hydrogens, so this would be your product. So you have you have ethanol going to well this is an aldehyde ethanol. Um, so not only could you practice your reactions, but you could also practice nomenclature. The nice thing about having a reaction sheet is that um, over time, as we add more reactions, you can just keep adding to this. You know, so if you could have this. You know, we've learned three reactions so far. That would be no reaction, and so on and so forth. So you could keep this with you. You know, it could fit in your purse or you know, carry it in your backpack all the time. The more you look at these reactions, the easier they will become. Another thing is that these molecules are going to be alcohols. You know, so you don't need to put a specific alcohol. You could put a very general, like a you know, for instance, secondary alcohol. You could put an example of what a secondary alcohol is and then put that it goes to a ketone and then put the structure of a ketone. So whatever works for you in terms of helping you learn this material. You know, it's not easy. You're learning so many different things so quickly in this class. So, you know, the more you see this, the more hands on you're with it you are with it, the easier it will become. You know, for me I've seen this so much that it's just it's part of me now because it's every semester I teach this. So uh, the more you study, the easier this will become. So if it's by the in the morning with your breakfast, excellent, 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 excellent. So um, back to the notes. So we'll stop here for this lecture. Um, we're going to continue on with some more nomenclature and the lecture that follows this. But I want you to keep practicing these reactions. Look over your lab 14. Um, you can complete a lot of those reactions already because we've just gone over them. So work on your homework problems, work on your labs, work on your reaction sheets, study, study, study. Until next time.